and having no physical shape. Rising to the challenge, Hatsujiro Hashimoto spent a long career studying atomic structures. A professor at the Okayama University of Science, Hashimoto is now in his 70s. 20 years ago, he was racing to be first to see an atom. Electron microscopes had reached a point where that goal was just possible. First past the post, though, physicist Albert Crewe and his team at the University of Chicago. Next, the University of Toronto's Peter Ottensmeyer. Hashimoto and his team at the Kyoto Institute of Technology came third. But how does one detect an atom when its surface is just a fuzzy electron cloud? What happens is this. An electron stream passing through an atom is deflected by the forces it encounters. The electron microscope measures this deflection to create an image of the atom. Hashimoto's team used the element thorium in their experiment. A heavy element, thorium easily deflects an electron beam. First, the researchers dissolved their sample in water. The next challenge was to support it in some way in a vacuum. Tiny copper grids, three millimeters across, provide the foundation for that support. The wires lie just far enough apart to let a human hair pass through. The holes in this grid, however, are still 500,000 times larger than a thorium atom. The holes must be smaller. Hashimoto's team solved that too. When chilled glass is exposed to room temperature, tiny water droplets form on its surface. Then liquefied plastic is poured on the water-fogged slide forming a thin film. The water droplets measure just thousandths of a millimeter across. Where the plastic film covers them, it develops cavities. The result is a plastic sieve with a huge number of tiny holes. When the plastic coated slide is put in the water, the plastic sieve floats off the glass. The next stage is to mount the sieves on the tiny copper grids. The work is time consuming. It demands a watchmaker's hands combined with extraordinary patience and care. But even these holes are not small enough to retain atoms. So an atom catcher has to scatter tiny pieces of carbon dust across the plastic film. At last, the experiment is ready. A drop of thorium solution is added and left until it evaporates. When it dries, it will be ready to view. We hope to see thorium atoms at points where the jagged pieces of carbon dust restrict the holes in the plastic sieve. Detecting atoms visually demands slow, arduous routines. It is delicate work. This is how Professor Hashimoto did it 20 years ago. 
Others, of course, devise their own methods in the race to be first to see an atom. The black lines are the copper wires. The oval forms are holes in the plastic sieve, and the jagged shapes superimposed on them, carbon particles. The electron microscope focuses on a point where a carbon fragment partially blocks a hole. Hashimoto's team made almost a thousand attempts to photograph an atom over a six-month period. They failed every time. At last, a single photograph. One in a thousand bore fruit. The large, bright areas are overlapping clusters of atoms. But Hashimoto's group was chasing a single atom. February 1971. At last, the team managed to capture a single bright blob. The mark of one atom. 380 years after the microscope was invented, researchers detected the presence of the elusive, long-sought atom. The National Institute for Researches on Inorganic Materials in Japan houses the world's most powerful microscope. Just 20 years after a film plate gave us the first foggy image of a thorium atom, atom spotting is almost routine. In this pattern, that looks like blue tweed, every bright spot represents a single atom, a screen full of atoms. This image shows a sample of ceramic material. Now watch what happens when I clap. The atoms vibrate in response, all in unison. The sample is encased in a heavy steel microscope, but still it responds. Perhaps each human footstep shifts as many atoms in the Earth as there are stars. Never forget, we are in constant touch with nanospace. Nanogate can't travel into the atomic world as fast as an electron microscope. But we get there. We're at the atomic level, among the smallest material units of being. Around me, gold atoms, always in motion, always restless, as you can see. But even though atoms are always moving, as long as the gold is a solid, the atoms pack together in an orderly, crystalline, three-dimensional pattern. Of course, each element in the compound has its own particular organization. Here we have two clusters of atoms, several thousand in each, merging into a single particle of gold. We're looking at gold atoms assembling into well-defined orderly rows, becoming a crystalline lattice of gold. In nanospace, in nature, atoms are in constant motion as restless as change itself. Here's another tweed-like pattern with atoms drawn up in the rigidly ordered formation that nature intended. In this case, the separate bright and dark patches represent calcium atoms in a human tooth. The jewel among jewels, diamonds. Diamonds result from intense heat and pressure deep within the earth. Under those conditions, carbon atoms are crushed into the lattice which gives diamond its faint brilliance and hardness. The Greek philosopher Leucippus taught that all things were made of tiny, identical particles. His pupil, Democritus, coined the name atom. It means indivisible, 
because atoms were thought to be the smallest unbreakable thing. 24 